Well, everybody, uh, this is a video uh, on financial to managerial accounting. Uh, my disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited, bleh, but not limited to Irvine Valley College and the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. Any distribution is strictly prohibited. So the reason why we're here today is because I'm we're coming post pandemic and a lot of testing has been online. Um, I when we were online, I made the decision to test using problem-based questions because my accounting philosophy is that when you're learning financial, managerial, intermediate accounting, cost accounting, when you're first learning it, it is always best to physically write out the solutions to problem-based questions. I like doing that as an instructor. That's my choice as an instructor because then I'm better able to evaluate students as they're going through and learning the material. Um, and so this video is I've, I've had students who have come into my managerial accounting class who are really struggling because they more than likely had a financial accounting class. It was just giving multiple choice questions. The challenge with multiple choice questions is that you know, you may get interview questions where you might be asked on the spot, can you tell me how to record a sales transaction? This is why it's so important that when you're learning accounting, you're really going through and getting those basics. So let's just kind of take a moment and go through generally what is covered in financial accounting. And then I'll go back and show you what's covered in managerial and then what we'll do is I kind of will overlay this in terms of what's really important. So the basics of financial accounting is usually my first exam is going to be just recording transactions. I call it, the first way I teach it is I call it my December 31st accounting party, where I do just focus on the balance sheet. Then I bring in the income statement. But the key things to be walking away from, from this very initial chapter is going through and preparing journal entries, using T accounts, uh, making that single step income statement that's revenues minus expenses, a statement of retained earnings and an unclassified balance sheet. It's understanding the relationship with these latter three that are extremely important. The next chapter that I go through and do is talking about adjusting entries. Adjusting entries is once we've recorded everything from the basics, we're now at December 31st and we're asking our four questions. Do our assets reflect the future economic benefit? Do the liabilities reflect our future obligations? Do the expenses reflect what we've used and the revenues reflect what we've earned? So we're gonna learn those adjusting journal entries. Those are also extremely important. And then we'll be doing the single step income statement, a statement of retained earnings, and then lastly, a classified balance sheet. I'm leaving out the trial balances and the like, but you know, if you go through my videos, you'll kind of understand how that works. Inventory, you know, how do I record inventory transactions? You know, free on board shipping, free on board destination. When do we take possession? How do I record a sales transaction? How do I record a purchase transaction? Um, how do I record inventory at the lower a cost or market? How do I do inventory costing? FIFO, light it, bleh. FIFO, which is first in, first out. LIFO, which is last in, first out, weighted average. And I test both periodic and perpetual. Cash and accounts receivables, right? Bank reconciliations. Do you know how to do that? Do you know what an allowance for doubtful accounts is? Do you know how to compute that using the percentage of AR and of aging of AR? How do you write off receivables, collect AR previously uncollected and bad debt expense? When we get into property, plant, and equipment or other non-current assets, the depreciation methods, units of production, double declining balance, straight line, what happens when we sell an asset? What happens when we have a change of estimate? Um, how do I deal with goodwill, intangible asset amortizations? Current liabilities and non-current liabilities, you've got contingent liabilities, warranties, 
understanding payroll. I generally don't have my students compute payroll liabilities just because it's it's important, but it's again, it's more of a of a conceptual understanding. Is that something you can pretty much do on your own? Bonds payable using present value tables. Can you determine what a bond is going to be valued at? And then finally, we get the statement of cash flows. I generally have my students focus on the indirect method. So this is when we're looking at a student who has taken my financial accounting class, this is generally going to give you a very good base for success in either managerial accounting and most specifically intermediate accounting. The way that I test all of this, and if you go onto YouTube, I have a lot of free material, meaning that you can go and find videos on a lot of these different topics. This would be the way that I would suggest going through and learning it. When I see a textbook, when they show the statement of cash flows in the first or second chapters, that's absolutely insane. Uh, they're, whoever wrote it shouldn't be writing textbooks, but that's what they do. Okay, now managerial accounting. Okay, so managerial accounting is not the same as financial accounting. And I just want to show you something really quick because financial accounting becomes intermediate accounting one and two. Managerial accounting becomes cost accounting. Those are very different things, but what you're going to see momentarily is there is some overlap. But again, if I looked at this over here, when you kind of look at, you know, the financial accounting topics, the adjusting entries, this is pretty much going to be covered in chapter three of Wiley uh, Intermediate Accounting. The inventory is going to be covered over multiple chapters, mainly I think it's eight and nine. Uh, cash and AR is covered under chapter seven. Uh, property, plant and equipment, and but going back to adjusting entries, it's also chapter five too. Um, property, plant and equipment, I believe is chapters 10 and 11. Uh, goodwill and intangibles is chapter 12. Current liabilities is chapter 13. Non-current is chapter 14. Uh, I also forgot out my statement of owner's equity. And so we, we give you an introduction to, to owner's equity. I should have included that, but I guess I just ran out of space. And then lastly, you have the statement of cash flows, which is one of the later chapters. It's chapter tested. I think it's chapters five. And I want to say it's one of the later ones in intermediate. So that is where financial accounting really translates to intermediate. But let's talk about managerial. Managerial is we're taking the information and we're either analyzing it. We're also looking at uh, costing for a manufacturer. So let's talk about this. The first chapter in managerial is typically going to be financial statement analysis. Now you will find some instructors, they incorporate this into the very first in the financial. I did that at Chapman when I taught there for a, for a year, and that was hard to do because this is so much material. So typically what I would do is if you have time, uh, you'll give students a project to do the financial statement analysis because it's just, it's so hard to test on. But after we're done with financial statement analysis, then we get into the introduction to managerial accounting. What's a variable versus a fixed cost, product versus period cost, direct, indirect, what are all those different concepts? The other thing too, is that when you have a managerial accounting is like you're going through and you're doing it with raw materials, uh, factory payroll, factory overhead, work in process and finished goods inventory. That's the introduction chapter. Now going to the next one, you've got job order costing, uh, when do we use it? How do you deal with under over applied overhead? How do we apply overhead? Process costing, what's, how do we, you know, when we're doing mass production, how do we go through and move costs from work in process to finish goods? Next chapter is overhead. You know, what are the different ways of determining overhead rates or how do we go through and allocate overhead? So those are different things. We'll actually, it's more about overhead allocation. So, but that's kind of how we go through and do it. And then once you get through those chapters, then you get to cost volume profit, which is identifying variable and fixed costs. How do you determine break even? Absorption versus variable costing, budgeting. Uh, can you create an income statement, statement of retained earnings and a balance sheet, creating a cash flow? Do you know what types of transactions impact cash? For example, 
if you if you put depreciation expense on a cash flow and it's not a statement of cash flows but you're showing that as a deduction to your outflows you've got a problem standard costing developing standards to determine what's happening in real time about direct materials direct labor variable overhead and fixed overhead this is really going through and looking at an analysis departmental budgeting how do we go through and allocate overhead this is very important because you can make something um, pro something that's profitable, which is something profitable to unprofitable, which is highly ethically challenging, but in the, in the entertainment industry, that's generally not a real big concern. So business decisions, make or buy, eliminate divisions, rework or build new, accept additional business, and then you get to present value and discounted cash flow. Okay, so again, when you look at the concepts of managerial accounting and typically why students have such a, a great challenge with managerial over financial is the fact that, well, in financial accounting, if we follow all these different steps here, everything kind of ties into a nice little bow. It's we start out with financial accounting, we get into adjusting entries, we get into inventory, and it's a lot of there's a lot of good flow. We end up with the statement of cash flows, which is probably the best final exam to give. When it comes to managerial accounting, though, this is what really throws off students. You're, you're starting off by analyzing what you did in the past semester. You're now doing um, you're now going through and doing concepts for a manufacturer. Um, then you get over here into like process costing overhead. So let's talk about now, what is it that you're going to need for each of these managerial accounting chapters? Okay, so when I look at this first one right over here, so for financial statement analysis, really what's the kind of the background that I would need? Well, for this one over here, right? I would really kind of say that the best preparation is going to be going back over here to, it's really going to be going back to the basics, meaning that how do we go through and, you know, what goes into preparing financial statements, but then it's going to be kind of going through and taking a step back and kind of seeing if things make sense. What's really hard about financial statement analysis is determining what is relevant to one company versus another, which is really gonna impact the way that you're gonna be going through and choosing ratios. Now for the second part over here is that the introduction to, man to managerial accounting. And this also goes to chapters, you know, the process costing and job order costing is what I'm going to share with you is one of my uh, sheets that I use with my intermediate accounting students, or excuse me, my managerial accounting um, honor students. Now, what you're gonna notice here is that the way that I will go through and determine, right, how cost of goods manufactured is determined, all these things is by using T accounts. Because in my opinion, this is for me, the best way to go through and teach cost of goods manufactured. And it's like, you start out here, we're starting with raw materials, we're starting with payroll, and then we've got overhead. How do we put those, those are all three related to production. How do we put those into the work in process? And then ultimately, how do they go to finish goods inventory? So for myself, my personal, you know, the way that I teach these classes is that the T accounts are critical. So when you come over here to really process costing, job order costing, and the introduction over here to managerial accounting, if I had to go back, back and map this out, I would really probably put this most with adjusting journal entries. And it's just because in these accounts, this is really where we're using T accounts. So going back and reviewing these particular parts. The other thing I would also say too is in terms of inventory, right? That's also going to be really, really critical going through and you know, looking at you know, for these parts over here because this is really dealing with manufacturing and 
But at the same time, too, you need to know how do you go through and determine gross profit, right? How do we go through and determine gross profit? What happens when we sell inventory on account? Well, we're going to debit AR, we're going to credit sales, we're going to debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory. So really chapters 15 through 17 really involve like this is what you work on in for a retailer when you're just looking at inventory and cost of goods sold and financial. But for managerial, we're going through and we're looking not only at these two accounts, but we're also going through and looking at work in process, raw materials, factory payroll, and factory overhead. So those are all extremely important. And I would really kind of say that these kind of head back to those first initial few chapters that are found in uh, financial accounting. So going to chapter 18, when we get to chapter 18 in managerial, which is our whatever it may be, when we're dealing with cost, volume, profit, this is really talking now we're more doing analytics. So I don't really have like in terms of a chapter where this directly relates, don't really have that. But when we get into absorption versus variable costing, right, the key is going to be kind of going back over here, because when I deal with inventory, one of the other things I'm going to also have to make sure I know how to do is to prepare a multi-step income statement. And the multi-step income statement is really important for a manufacturer, or actually, excuse me, more important, more most important for a retailer, but also very important for a manufacturer as well. So those are things that really kind of continue to kind of pop out at you. So looking at budgeting, right? So with the, the next chapter, which again, budgeting, it's kind of, wow, this is coming out of nowhere. But what this is really kind of looking at over here is I would say, can you go through and create financial statements, which is really going back to the adjusting journal entries. And also creating a cash flow and knowing about what types of transactions impact cash, you might see a little bit of that over here when it comes to doing the statement of cash flows. But the statement of cash flows for a for financial reporting is very different than a statement of cash flows for managerial accounting or for operating a business. So it's just one of those things that's going to be different. Standard costing. Um, is there a preparation that you would really kind of go through and need? No, because it's really being built off of what you looked at before, but it's really trying to say we're trying to in real time being able to analyze any issues with materials, labor, variable, or fixed overhead. Um, departmental budgeting, uh, overhead allocations amongst departments. In financial accounting, I would say that the closest thing to going through and looking at this would, eh, I can't really think of one where we're going through and doing it. So this is gonna be something you're gonna be learning new. Uh, business decisions, make or buy, eliminate divisions. This is really where it's, you're taking a step back from the material and really trying to see if you can understand it. But again, um, I have some great videos that are on these different topics. So if that's something you would like me to request, or if you want me to do something like that, just send me an email. Now, last chapter here is present valuing and discounted cash flow. When I go through and do this, right? If you have not been exposed to present valuing, this is going to be an absolute nightmare because when we talk about a discounted cash flow, that's going to be something where a dollar today is not the same as a dollar tomorrow. In financial accounting, I will introduce my students to bonds and other different uh, topics uh, to how do you go through and value a bond. So again, if you haven't been exposed to this in managerial accounting, meaning you're learning uh, present valuing for the very first time, you're going to find it extremely uh, difficult when you get there. Now, here's what I would say to you. If, if you're planning on becoming a CPA, if that's what your goal is, if you want to become a certified public accountant, the, and if you didn't have, if your financial accounting education was lacking in some of these different things, go back and relearn the material. And the reason why is because if you do that, you're not wasting time. And 
you know, we all teach the material differently. Um, but if you go back and relearn the financial accounting material and give yourself that refresher, not only are you going to be better prepared for managerial accounting, but you're going to be super prepared for intermediate accounting. And I can tell you that I've now taught, I'm teaching intermediate accounting for my seventh time. And uh, Professor Lacey Willis at Chapman, a uh, great instructor, she mentored me when I was first starting to teach intermediate and I was going, oh, I'm going to do an exam on the first five chapters. I'll know about it. You need to go through and give an exam that ensures that students, do they know how to do the basics? Can they go through and record transactions? Can they prepare financial statements? That's what we're looking to do. So if, if it's been a while or you, you're taking managerial and you're going, I don't know what's going on, spend the time reviewing. When you review accounting questions, what is so important to do, it is practice and repetition. How many times you're going through and doing it, because by the way, as you're going through and preparing this, you're essentially directly preparing yourself for the CPA exam. So it's, you're giving yourself a boost, not only for managerial accounting, but you're also going to be giving yourself a boost for um, basically for intermediate accounting. So again, if you had an instructor that was for financial accounting that was using multiple choice questions, not a problem-based exam type of instructor, that's okay, you pass the class. But if you're taking my class in particular, you want to go back through and review the material that I provided to you so that when you take managerial, you're going to be successful in the class. So again, uh, that's kind of like my suggestion to you. You can take it or leave it, whatever you want to do with it. But I strongly encourage you that if you are taking managerial accounting, that you really go back through and re-review those different concepts. Because if you're going to be going on in accounting, then you know that's exactly what you're going to do. Now, if you're saying to me, hey, Tchaikovsky, I'm done. I might not be if you're saying that, dude, I just want to get through the semester and be done with managerial accounting. And if that's what your goal is, I, you know, hey, that's that's great. I'm probably not going to be the best instructor for you if you're just looking for the easy way out. But my goal is always to give you the very best education. The other thing I would share with you too is what you learn in managerial accounting is going to be directly applying to cost accounting. I have had students share with me that my managerial accounting class, it either gave them a very, very good foundation for their next cost accounting class, or I've actually heard from students that have transferred that my managerial accounting class was more challenging than the, than the uh, upper division cost, which I still don't really believe, but that's what they've told me. But again, it's really about you know what you put into your education, you're going to get out of it. And the time that you put in now means less time that you have to put in if you are going to be going through and pursuing a CPA license at some point in time. So I want to thank you for uh, joining me here today. If there's any other videos that you'd like me to create or see, leave, feel free to leave a comment. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I want to thank all my subscribers for helping me achieve the thousand subscriber goal. Um, and I'm planning on doing a giveaway at some point in time. And this is February 14th, 2022. Uh, so probably hopefully be within the next month that I'll be doing a giveaway for my subscribers. So again, thank you for liking and subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great one.